Hey everybody, my name is Danielle, and today we're going to be talking about a specific type of macromolecule called nucleic acid. So first off, macro means big. So these molecules are the big four major categories of molecules that basically make up everything in your entire body. These molecules are protein, carbohydrates, lipids, and of course, nucleic acids which is what we're going to be spending most of our time talking about today. So what are nucleic acids? When you think about nucleic acids, you probably think of a DNA double helix. DNA is one type of nucleic acid, but another type is called RNA. And we're going to be talking about the differences between RNA and DNA throughout the video, but first I want you to look at the names. So DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, and RNA stands for just ribonucleic acid. I want you to pay special attention to the only difference between these two names being that the deoxy part, which will be important for later. So keep that in mind. So why do we care about nucleic acids? Why are they important? For starters, DNA is a map of our genetic makeup. It essentially tells our body how to work and is the basis for the rest of the processes in our body. Secondly, it does this by coding for genes, which are passed down from your mom and your dad and are responsible for how we look and how our bodies work. This can include things from hair and eye color to height to much more complex processes such as metabolism. And DNA goes through a series of steps to take a string of nucleotides, which are A, C, T, or G, and uses them as a template to make RNA, which ultimately makes protein. Believe it or not, these squiggly lines making up the protein actually mean something, but that's for another video. So we're going to start today's topic with a review of polymers and monomers. The definition of a polymer is a compound that is made up of smaller, repeating units to make a larger molecule. Those small, repeating units are referred to as monomers, and all of the macromolecules in this polymer monomer have this polymer monomer composition. So in this picture, what I'm showing you is, is how a monomer gets added to a polymer. As you see, is that they are repeating units and have a hydrogen and hydroxyl group, the OH group. This happens by using a dehydration reaction to get rid of the water, causing the mon monomer to be chemically bound to the growing polymer chain. All right, so let's get to talking about DNA structure. The structure of both RNA and DNA are almost exactly the same, with one exception, which I'll be highlighting here in a second. It has three main groups. A phosphate backbone, here in blue, a ribose sugar here in red, and I want you to pay special attention to that hydrogen, which I'll go into more detail here in a second. Um, and then finally, the nitrogenous bases, which for DNA is A, C, T, or G. So back to the hydrogen. Um, if you remember that DNA is called deoxyribonucleic acid, and in Latin, D means without, and the oxy part is referring to the oxygen. So this is saying that in comparison to RNA, DNA does not have an oxygen at that place. Okay, so here what we're seeing is DNA in its polymer, uh, polymerized form, which is a DNA double-stranded helix. Here I'm showing you the actual chemical structure of double-stranded DNA. Notice how the oxygen and phosphates bond together to make the phosphate backbone. On to RNA. RNA has the same three basic parts of the structure that are the same as DNA, which is the phosphate backbone, again shown here in blue, the ribose sugar shown in red. Uh, pay special attention to that OH, which is different from DNA because it is an OH instead of an H. And the nitrogenous bases, again, shown here in green. Notice that this isn't AGCT, but rather AGCU. So RNA doesn't have a T, but instead has a U, which we'll go over more detail here in a second. Um, and unlike DNA, 
RNA in its main form doesn't have a double strand. So that's why you only see one strand being made for RNA in this picture. So I just want to take a second to make sure I emphasize the monomers and polymers here. So this is the RNA monomer, this is the polymer, and then this is the DNA monomer. Okay, back to talking about nitrogenous bases. So as we said before, DNA has four nitrogenous bases, which are A, C, T, and G. Here we're going to be talking about what are called the pyrimidines, which is just a fancy way of categorizing the nucleotides based on their structure. The first nucleotide we have is thiamine, and the other we have here is cytosine. Again, these are pyrimidines, and the way I remember which are pyrimidines is by the Y. <clears throat> Notice that the word pyrimidine has a Y, and so do its nitrogenous bases, thymine and cytosine. So there's an easy way to remember which ones are pyrimidines. Next, we have uracil, which is only for RNA. So it's also a pyrimidine, but I just want to make sure you understand this is only used in RNA. DNA does not have this. Um, and, and this is, takes the place of thiamine, in RNA. So next we're going to be talking about the purines. So this is the other category they can be in, either pyrimidine or purine. We already talked about the pyrimidines, um, and now these purines have a different general structures, uh, different general structure than the pyrimidines, specifically that they have two carbon rings. Notice how um, none of these nitrogenous bases are going to have any Ys in them. So we have adenine and guanine. So that's how you can, uh, again, help distinguish them for, from which ones are the pyrimidines. So the last subject we're going to be touching on here is going to be how bases pair. But to do that, we need to have a mini hydrogen bonding review. Here I'm showing you the molecules that can participate in hydrogen bonding. On the left, we have water, which is a classic example of hydrogen bonding. And then on the right, we have two other molecules, fluoride and nitrogen. The dots around the O and the N are the lone pairs of electrons that belong to those atoms. So hydrogen bonding is an interaction that happens between hydrogen and either fluorine, nitrogen, or oxygen. These are bonds that aren't covalent but they are very strong when there's lots of hydrogen bonding happening at once. Now finally, we're going to be talking about base pairing. Base pairing can only happen between a pyrimidine and a purine. So that means either cytosine or thiamine paired with an adenine or guanine. A and T always pair together, and C and G are always going to pair together. <clears throat> The bonds between these nucleotides are hydrogen bonds, which is why we talked about hydrogen bonding. Between A and T, there are two hydrogen bonds, and between G and C, there are three hydrogen bonds. All right, well, that's all we've got for this video on nucleic acids. Stay tuned for more videos to come. Thanks.